So with, with all this setup, a mammoth 70% of reduction in latency and network calls was observed by Atlassian and they achieved a P99 latency of around 0.7 milliseconds. It's mentioned in their article. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to discuss one of the interesting topic about Sidecar and how Atlassian used it to reduce their latency by 70%. In this video, basically we'll uh, talk about the power that Sidecar comes with, right? And in what are the different areas you can think of implementing a Sidecar service and what is a Sidecar service, basically we'll also discuss about that. So let's get started. So first off, first let's just talk a little bit about what we mean by latency. So latency in simple terms as you can know right, uh, whenever a user is making a request right. So latency basically talks about the delay before a transfer of data begins following a uh, instruction right. And the main thing is Atlassian faced this challenge as their services when their services scale globally. They needed a way to ensure that uh, users could access their data quickly no matter where they are uh, using their application from or where they are requesting services from. So what was the problem then? The main problem lied in the multiple calls that was being done to the, the TCS service that is known as the Atlassian Tenant Context Service. So this TCS service was responsible for managing users data across various regions. I mean let's say Europe region, Asian region, Australian region, all that so on and so forth. So each time a user interacted with any app, let's say the app could be Jira, Confluence, Bitbucket. These are products by Atlassian, right? Each time a user interacted with any of these apps, you know, that the TCS had to process literally from thousands of users. It could be, let's say, tens of thousands of requests per second. If I just show you their article once, uh, we just talk, let's just talk a bit about the context service or, uh, or the tenant context service that I'm talking about. So tenant context service is needed to be called multiple times per user request. Incredibly low latency and globally distributed. Essentially it would need to service tens of thousands of requests per second. And this was the requirement from the TCS service. And if I just give you a brief about TCS service and what does it do. And TCS service basically it's a tenant con context uh, service, right? And it basically deals with the tenant metadata like how many active products you have, what is, what is your license details, uh, all the tenant related metadata, all those information it service uh, serves. Okay? That's a brief about the tenant context service. So some of the requirement of the te tenant context service or TCS service from Atlas in itself was this. I mean, you can just go through it. With this TCA service, without this sidecar pattern, what, what would happen? Like every click, like the every click could require multiple requests to different servers across the world. The result will be increased latency and they needed a solution which would you know streamline this entire process without compromising on the performance basically. So after realizing their entire existing architecture, just for a moment forget about the sidecar, just think that the client is directly connected to the TCS server, all right? So after analyzing their entire architecture here, so Atlassian realized that their clients, that means the application themselves, its own application, like Jira, Confluence, Bitbucket, which are using, they were becoming their bottlenecks. Each app was making, you know, numer numerous calls to the TCS service. So in order to solve this case, they came up with a sidecar pattern. Now, before coming to the sidecar pattern, I'll just show you the latency issue that they noticed. Let's say they're using a lot of applications, right? If you see the clients that were sending requests to the TCS server, they experienced a significant latency of around let's say 100 milliseconds here. So that was a quite big, that was quite huge for them. They needed to figure out a way to fix this issue. So the root cause was every client was, you know, behaving differently while uh, communicating with the TCS server. Some of the clients were communicating with the TCS server following all the best practices and some client were not following some of the best practices. That's why you know, all these kind of latencies they were noticing. So in order to solve this, what the TCS team did in there, they came up with a TCS sidecar. Also, they also found that, you know, the traditional casing method that were there, right? They were either too slow or not effective enough. So that's where Atlassian thought of something interesting. So what they did, instead of forcing every application to handle its own logic for caching data and doing the re re request retries and all those things, why not to create a dedicated service like this, uh, which, which will act as a you know uh, sidecar service. That's where the sidecar pattern came into the picture in TCS, in the entire Atlassian architecture. Now just let's discuss about what is a sidecar. What exactly is a sidecar? So think of it like, you know, having a co-pilot for your application so that the sidecar runs alongside your main application on the same machine. So there is no network call, actually ideally network call between the client and the sidecar is both of them are residing in the same machine, it's just a local host call to the sidecar service. So the sidecar services can perform tasks like caching the data, frequently requested data, then handling retries on behalf of the client, 
to the TCS server, right? And managing all the requests that are going from client to the TCS through this sidecar pad, through this sidecar service. And this sidecar was designed by the TCS service itself. Now, what is the functional functions of this sidecar pattern? Now, if you see here, so one of the most uh, frequently used function of the sidecar pattern was that, you know, the sidecar keeps frequent access data close to it, which will, you know, reduce the need to call the uh, TCS server repeatedly from the client for the data, right, for the same data. Even if they had a global uh, caching server, distributed caching server, that became a bottleneck. That's why sidecar could act as a cache. And the second point was, it can make multiple requests at once to different TCS uh, regions and return the faster response. The Atlas and products are used by, by globally, right? So they do not have a pool of server in a particular region. They have multi-region deployments. A sidecar services now can, you know, make requests to multiple regions. Let's say your ASEAN region server was down for some, for some reason. The sidecar can, you know, quickly send requests to the uh, other nearest region, let's say European region or Australian region, and return the fastest response, whichever TCS services sends the response back. So your client won't have to suffer in that case in terms, uh, in the scenario of a outage of a particular region or region-based outage of a particular uh, service cluster. So using the sidecar pattern, the another benefit was the main application that, or the client that did, does not need to change its code base uh, significantly, right? So it simply communicates with the sidecar and sidecar does the job on behalf of the client. So client does not have to implement those things, all the retries or handling the caching, caching efficiently. Those are now just part of the sidecar and client. the client application itself is uh, free from those headaches. So as you discussed, now the sidecar caches data up to one hour when some updates are done on the main database. The cache has to be updated, right? So that notification uh, or the update request comes to the sidecar service through the AWS SNS or AWS notification system to the sidecar servers and the sidecar can refresh its cache instantly without waiting for the next request. Ideally, how do we update a cache request? When a request comes, we see that the data is outdated or invalidated and we get a fresh data from the database, we update it in the cache. But here using the AWS SNS, it could get the updates quickly and without waiting for the next request from the client, it will just you know keep the cache updated. So it will always have the fresh data. When we talk about the parallel request, as I told, instead of waiting for one TCS region to respond, the sidecar can fire request to multiple TCS region. Let's say this is this one is in the Europe. Some similar we can have uh, one more in the Australia, right? So the sidecar can fire parallel request to these regions and whichever servers return the response first, it will send the response back to the client. So with, with all this setup, a mammoth 70% of Reduction in latency and network calls was observed by Atlassian and they achieved a P99 latency of around 0.7 millisecond. It's mentioned in their article. So the P99 latency become just 0.7 milliseconds, which is uh, lightning fast rate it's used. So some of the other benefits of this were, you know, improved user experience, like uh, as the latency were drastically re reduced, the users could now have a better user experience rate. Their, their own client or the own application won't be down because there is a sidecar pattern which is handling all the things efficiently which makes TCS to be highly available that can and context service servers to be highly available so it also improved the reliability rate because if one region is down then the other region Asian region is down and then European region server is available to send a request and sidecar handles that uh, headache of retrying the request with multiple uh, regions so cost obviously by reducing unnecessary database, co database calls and caching the request locally and also reducing the number of network calls that is going from the client to TCS across network, actual that is actual network call, drastically reduces on the resource uses, right? Also help the Atlas and save cost uh, while improving performance. So, and the final benefit of the sidecar pattern was about scalability because the approach is highly scalable. It can be applied across various applications regardless of the programming language or framework. Because even if it is the client is written in Go, you can uh, still implement the sidecar in Java. It won't matter. The client just need to do a localhost network, uh, localhost API call. Right? So what are your key takeaways then from this, uh, all the discussion that we did? Always look, look for ways to offload your task from your application, main application. So sidecar helps you do that let's say tracing or observability or collecting metrics from your services instead of directly integrating those things in your main code base you can pass that load or offload that load to a sidecar pattern and sidecar will do that thing for you okay and then implement caching strategies that are adaptive and responsive instead of maybe having a distributed caching you can think of a sidecar approach to cache the things also so consider using patterns like the sidecar for better performance without heavy code changes it's a very good thing because you don't need to do any code changes in your app main application code base sidecar is just as a standalone thin server that runs along alongside your main application right so 
that was about today's uh, discussion on how sidecar pattern have helped atlassian to reduce latency by 70 percent and make their application five nines of available 99.99 percent available so this is a blog from the atlassian itself i'll put the link to this blog in the description section you can go through it and uh, learn more about it i hope you like this video if you found this video helpful just drop a like and let's target for 50 likes for this video and subscribe to my channel like create this kind of out of the box concept and deep core tech based uh, videos to help you understand very useful tech topics and system design topics in detail so you can check out my learn out of the box playlist where i have covered more than 20 type of this kind of use cases there and you will find that playlist definitely interesting and a lot of learnings will be involved there for you okay so you can check out that playlist if you have any questions around this or uh, whatever discussed put them in the comment section and we'll discuss there okay and keep please subscribe to my channel i'm targeting to reach 300 uh, 3000 subscribers by the end of this month so keep supporting and thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you